Are you going crazy trying to figure out what you need to add to the margin to make your cover large enough or small enough as you try to publish your first KDP book? Do you think you have it just right only to get another error message from Amazon telling you that you have to fix another millimeter or two before they'll publish your book, even though you swear that's what you just did? I absolutely know that feeling. It happened to me over and over and over again until I figured out this streamlined, easy hack that now I use every time and I don't run into that problem. Hey guys, it's Rebecca. Welcome back to my channel where I am sharing all of the ways I am making money online, including the transparency behind the scenes in what I'm making, what I'm spending, and where those hurdles are popping up along the way. Today, I wanted to touch on Amazon KDP books and creating covers, which was honestly one of the things that scared me or intimidated me at least the most when it came to trying to start selling on Amazon KDP. Even though I was only thinking about selling no content books like journals, lined notebooks, diaries, trackers, logbooks, things like that, I still was worried about the kind of designs I'd need to have or how I'd figure out all of the different combinations of margins based on whether I'm using a bleed interior or not, or whether I'm doing a six by nine inch book versus a US size eight and a half by 11 paper. And I honestly thought all of that was gonna get so annoying it was not gonna be worth the trouble. Fast forward to me actually utilizing the help section of Amazon KDP, which is actually very good and very comprehensive. And now I've figured out how I prefer to make my covers. And I wanna show you the quick and easy steps as well, so that hopefully it helps you streamline your creation process and keeps you from hitting those same error messages over and over and over again, like I was when I first started. As you can see, I am already in the help section, and if you scroll to the left-hand menu and follow these breadcrumbs, I am in book formatting, format your paperback. And I like to scroll down, and you'll see that format your cover file gives us three different options. You can use a free tool by Amazon KDP. You can download a cover template or you can create your own cover. One thing that I thought was really interesting as I really got into the weeds and understood all of the nuances here is that I thought for sure that using their free tool would be the best bet. But I have quickly come to learn that all I want to do is download a cover template because I'm obsessed with Canva. So if you click through to the cover calculator, you'll see that you do already need to know your basic book information. And the biggest thing here is that you do need to know the number of pages you'll be using. So you'll see that based on everything being grayed out, this does act as a progressive menu and you do have to answer the first drop down before all of the others will show you the options. So if our binding type is paperback, our interior type will be choose black and white, premium colored or standard color. And for this example, let's say we're going to make a 100 page children's coloring book. So it will be in black and white. The paper type, cream or white. And we get to reading direction. And I think they may have improved this because I do think it used to be the reverse, but now it seems like it's very intuitive. It used to say maybe page flip direction, but reading direction left to right. So in this case, if we are doing a traditional English style book, whether there are words or not, you open the book and read from left to right. That just makes sure the cover will be formatted on the correct side. But it is nice that you do have the opposite option. So if you are writing a book or designing a book 
for another language that is read in reverse, you have flexibility to design that way without having to try and mirror image or design upside down and hope that it comes out correctly. So it is nice that they've given us all of the tools and features for optionality in that regard. Now, this template is nice, helpful, amazing in and of itself, but you don't even have to sit down and copy all these numbers and map out your own cover. From here, you can simply download the template. And what that will do is it will send you that same design you just saw, but with color-coded information in both a PNG and a PDF format. So what I like to do here is head over to my Canva account. And if you haven't already discovered this, Canva makes it incredibly easy for you to upload your own images, videos, files of all types. But what's really fun is I don't even have to go to upload or a certain page. I can just drag the PDF, drop it onto the main page, and you'll see that instantly I'm getting a notification that that entire PDF is being imported to Canva. So all I did was import it. I could have clicked view while it popped up there, but since I didn't catch it in time, I can scroll down and it should sit right here as my most recent design. And I can click it and have it open instantly. You'll see it's asking about my file, import feedback. I don't wanna do that right now. But amazingly, this template has been uploaded to Canva directly. It has already sized itself appropriately, so I don't have to resize anything. I didn't have to see whether there were extra margins added on the top, bottom sides, etc. And you can see that it gives me a key to show me that as I design, everything in red is outside of the live area. It could be cut off as bleed, so it's kind of your margin of error for your cover. Don't put text running into this red area. And you can even see that the barcode is going to take over the yellow square. So now you don't have to worry about being the perfect graphic designer. And especially if you're starting with something like a simple journal, or you're making a solid color design, a repetitive design that can go off the page in any direction. It is kind of the safe, clean, easy way to make sure that your cover will get approved as you try to launch your book. So from here, you can see that there are a lot of details included. And one thing I really, really want to point out to you is that right here on the spine, there is some text in a really light gray color, similar to here, the back cover, the front cover, and it's labeling that it's the spine width, but make sure that you delete that and it's not hiding on your book because that is one of the easiest pieces to overlook. Of course, you also have these sections, back cover, front cover. You don't wanna leave any of this text here. You don't want to leave the barcode label, but all of that is pretty obvious. This little piece, maybe not so much. So hopefully that saves somebody out there some trouble. Now, some people like to work on this design directly. You can, of course, highlight everything and lock it in place and then go back and delete it later. Or you can highlight it and make it transparent so that you can work over it and, again, go back and delete it later. Or what I actually like to do is make a copy of it, delete all the text right away. And honestly, I like to start by creating the spine myself. If you're doing a journal, you don't have to worry about putting text on the side. And especially if it's your first book, let's keep it simple. So you might wanna just make a spine that looks similar to that. Or if you're making a traditional journal, you might want the spine to roll over a little bit more anyway. Think about how your composition notebook might look. 
So if you do do a full page color element like this, make sure it goes off the page and cover, fully covers this red bleed line. Otherwise you can delete these pieces and start designing. You can add shapes, squares. You, honestly, if you're doing a single color, you don't have to make a square across the entire element. You could simply click background color and make the entire page start like that. Or you could drag and drop a photo and send it to the back. And you can see how starting with my spine really helps me be able to visualize the book a little bit better and recognize that my cover is going to be on the right side here. So if you wanted to add an element or you did want to put something that said notebook, you could of course just do something right there. And, if, and again, I'm not looking to design something amazing right now. So I'm just going to kind of click some elements so you can see how easy this is, even if you don't necessarily have design background. And if you think it looks too simple or boring with regular text, you can use some of the text combinations that they recommend already, which always has a little bit of an element of professional already built into it. So maybe you just say journal. I can highlight this. Let's make it match my page a little bit better. And since we made it yellow, we don't need to have the box. And you can see how even just adding the elements that are sitting right here help us get some ideas about the options we have in creating covers. Again, without necessarily needing to have all the answers. We can make a coffee break journal. We can mix and match elements and essentially create any type of design that comes to mind or that we're inspired by as we go. You can use matching fonts. You can use different offset fonts. Obviously, this is a little hard to see, but you can see where I'm going with all this. Literally just making things up as I go along, and we are building something that started as nothing in literally minutes. The final piece I wanted to point out is that you, of course, don't have to put anything on the back cover at all. But if you decide to, just remember that unless you are using your own barcode, which many beginners probably will not be, Amazon will provide you a free barcode that they will instantly put on your book cover. So all you have to do is make sure that you do not cover that space. So you do not have to put a rectangle here. You do not have to put a placeholder barcode. You will not have to get a barcode and go back later. You, have, you don't have to do anything with the barcode whatsoever. Now, if you are designing an entire back page, one small piece I do like to do to make sure I always account for that barcode location is to just draw myself the same rectangle as you can see here since the one thing that kind of stinks is that's the one element that's not separated out so if i just estimate it or at least overestimate it then i can't go wrong looks like i need to make it a little bit larger here and i can simply copy and paste and you'll see that it instantly goes back to the exact same spot that I was designing on. So if I make it some obnoxious color, then I can see here that as I design on the back cover, I'm not sure what all these graphics are used for, but if I decide that I'm going to add balloons around the whole back cover, I know not to cover up anything in that rectangle. And then of course, right before I download, I will delete that. And when I'm happy with my design, I will go up to share, click the download button, make sure that my file type is set to PDF print, 
best for printing. And you are not going to use crop marks and bleed because you are not the one using it to trim after printing. You do not need that selected. You do want to flatten the PDF and you do not need to include notes. You of course only need the one page selected that is going to be your cover file and your color profile as you can see tells us RGB is best for digital use but CMYK is best for professional printing. So I always choose that because I am having this book professionally printed by Amazon but you can see by the crown that does mean that it is a Canva Pro tool. So if you only have the free Canva account, you will not be able to do this CMYK option, but you have to imagine that, especially if you are just designing a journal and the colors don't have to be exactly spot on, and it's still going to the same high level Amazon professional printer, you are probably going to be just fine with RGB. That's my two cents, but I haven't seen the books side by side. I don't know how different it looks, but just note that. So even if you're working with the free edition of Canva, you are still able to do all of this. From there, you click download. Your file will be in your download section as a PDF. And you'll simply upload that file in the cover spot for your book when you're filling in all of the information. So that's it for how I like to make sure the size is always right for my covers as I design Amazon low content books for KDP Publishing. But if you have any other tips, tricks, tools, hacks, let me know in the comments below because I am always looking for ways to make it easier, to simplify, to streamline, to automate, anything we can do to get to the classic working smarter, not harder mentality helps us all. If you have any more questions when it comes to cover design or interior design, I am not promising to be a graphic designer, but I am happy to answer you with the best of my knowledge or my own personal accounts. And any questions outside of all that that you have, just drop in the comments for me because I love talking with you one-on-one. -on -one. I love hearing how other people are doing in their experiences in Amazon KDP, whether the platform's working for you, whether you found something else that works better. Let me know so we can all grow together. Again, I am Rebecca. If you are new here, I would love to have you subscribe and join me on this journey, on this adventure, and hopefully uh, start taking the same journey and adventure for yourself if you're not already. So until next time, I hope everyone stays well, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.